And on the back of the, the picture, notice this inscription. My dearest Tom, I love you with all my heart. I love you more and more each day. I will love you forever and ever. I am yours for all eternity. And it was signed Helen. She had given him this picture early on in their relationship. But it continued with a P.S. If we ever break up, I want this picture back. <laughs> now what kind of commitment was that? Ruth made her commitment. She said, as we I often say in wedding, uh, this one passage I use over and over again in weddings, forsake me not to leave you, nor to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. You know, I, I've had countless couples say that. The only part they ever stumble over is that uh, your people shall be my people. <laughs> because we oftentimes always feel as an outsider in a family we marry into. That's not true in Ruth and Naomi's life. Uh, where you die, that's where I'll die. Uh, she was giving up all the gods of Moab to worship and serve the one true God, the God that she had seen displayed in Naomi's heart, the God who had motivated Naomi to show her love to Ruth. And as she closes that, when you, where you die, that's where I'll die, and there I will be buried. What a commitment. What a commitment. The young man went to the town hall to apply for a marriage license, and after uh, filling out all the papers, said this, uh, the clerk said, this license, license is good for 30 days. The young man said, no, 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 that's not the one I want. I want the one that says, till death do us part. <laughs> he was making a commitment. He was making a commitment. R Ruth is making a commitment to Naomi. In love, she is saying, I will be with you no matter what. Uh, I, will, I will adopt you. I will have your home as my home. Uh, I will take care of you. I, ultimately, your God shall be my God, and your people shall be my people. And the end result of that, a mother never quits believing Believing in God's provision, believing that, that she has done her part, believing uh, in this case, Naomi's could believe beyond all hope because there was no hope for her. But because of Ruth, she once again had a family. She once again had a son. She once again had a future. She once again had land and possessions. She once again uh, had the love that she desired in her heart because Ruth loved her back. The easiest way to get love is to love somebody and let them love you back. Amen? You can't manufacture it. You can't, you can't invent it. It doesn't come from nothing. It comes from one heart sharing with another heart. Moms, how precious you are in displaying love. Uh, we dads need to do a better job. <laughs> but how great it is that you show love. Now, I want you to note in this video, yeah, if, you, if you were to talk to uh, this basketball player, Kevin Durant, he'll also tell you that his mom really had some rules. <laughs> And his mom was really good at encouraging, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I, I Waking up in the middle of the night to go run and <laughs> do push-ups and calisthenics, his mom was helping him become the best he could be. So you know, love isn't just standing back and watching the child go wherever it wants and, and dusting off them off when they fall. Love is, is pushing them forward encouraging him to do and become what God wants him to do. My son said, Dad, I really want you to be there for my graduation because you're the one that just kept encouraging me no matter, no matter what to go and, and, and finish and to get this degree. And you're the one that, that, that just kept doing it. Well, of course, it turned out I couldn't be there. But I had a long talk with him last night 
Uh, he said they almost didn't let him go through because, you know, his wife has this spiked pink hairdo and, and he has tattoos on his arm. <laughs> you know, those, but he explained he was from Portland, so they understood. <laughs> no. Uh, but it's a proud moment. You know, one thing in the midst of that is my daughter-in-law called 45 minutes on the phone talking as... as uh, Father to daughter, and daughter to father. Her dad passed away from cancer. And I'm telling you, that girl's as much a daughter as, as my biological children are. Uh, and she, there is one fault that she has, though. She said on, she put on her bucket list that, that she wanted to hear me say a curse word before she died. <laughs> I, I told her, I pray that I never help you fulfill that. <laughs> you know, family, moms, dads, what a blessing it is to be in a loving relationship. And when your kids get old enough, when Brandon finds that sweetie, <laughs> uh, when they start to, to look around and get married, I, I'm t nobody will be good enough for them. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. But I'm telling you, I'm glad God picked my two son-in-laws and my daughter-in-law because he did a great job. And I love them like they were my own. You know, we need to have more love in our families, don't we? This Mother's Day, express your love to your mother. Husbands, express your love to the mother of your children. Help them to know how much you appreciate their love throughout this time. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that when you created moms, you created someone who most looked like you when it came to the area of love. I pray, Lord, that, that we would bring occasion of tears of joy and, and, and tears of pride uh, in our mother's eyes as we live out that love and as we help to love others with the same kind of love that you've expressed, Father. I thank you uh, for this time that when we've looked at a mom's love, Lord, we thank you for the example of the moms in the Bible, examples that we can learn from and grow from. And, and Lord, we pray that you would help us to apply this lesson today, uh, this lesson of unrelented, uh, just love that never gives up, uh, love that keeps on going, love that trusts in you. And Lord, thank you for the answers that you gave to Ruth and Naomi many years ago. Thank you for the answers that you're going to put in our lives as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all please stand? Yeah, read all four chapters. It's a wonderful story of the faithfulness of God. If you're here this morning and God's spoken to you through his word or through the music or sometime during the week. He's spoken to you and you'd like to pray with me about what he has said. You'd like to come and know Jesus as your Savior especially. That would be a grand thing to do. Okay? Why don't you come as we sing.